Neville Goddard. Perception. 4, 26, 1968. By Neville Goddard. Perception. An essay. There is nothing that appears in perception which cannot be duplicated in fancy. And what the world perceives is all imaginative in character. Here's a graphic example. I'm sure everyone knows what it is to detect the fragrance of a rose. Now smell is a chemical sense and depends upon contact for perception. But does one really need a rose to detect its fragrance? Cannot its fragrance be reproduced imaginatively? Having smelled an Easter lily, can you not discriminate between the smell of a rose and a lily? Imaginatively? then they do not exist independent of you, but live on some level or levels of your imagination. Can you call upon your memory of an experience long ago, bring it back, and duplicate it in fancy? If so, then this world is no different from your imaginal one. In 1820, William Brake wrote The Presence of the Divine Teacher, in which he said, Man is all imagination, and God is man, and exists in us, and us in him. The divine body, Jesus, we are his members. In this statement, Blake does not separate the members from the body. The one spirit, the one hope, the one Lord, the one faith, the one God, and Father of us all. There is only one imaginal body. We are all his members, for we are all imagination. You can reproduce and duplicate any perception you have ever encountered in your imagination. A friend or dear one does not need to be physically present for you to think of him. Nor do you have to be in your living room or in order to see its contents. You can see the plains of Kansas, the mountains of Colorado, or the great Mississippi River without being there. So when we think from the premise, of this, as a world of imagination, we start on solid ground, for imagination is he who creates reality. There is no fiction in the true sense of the world, for when a state is imagined, it is created. Prayer is imagination drenched in feeling, a desire drenched in the feeling of fulfillment, objectifies itself. This I know to be true. So regardless of what the world thinks, when you reproduce anything in your mind, it takes on form in your outer world. Everything here was once only imagined. The clothes you wear, the chair in which you are now seated, the building which houses you, all were first only imagined. Everything begins and ends in the human imagination. The source of all phenomena is divine imagining, which is God himself. Scholars consider the 82nd Psalm as the most difficult psalm in the entire Bible. Thomas Sheen, the editor of the Encyclopedia Biblica, said of this psalm, the ideals may be perennial, but their outward forms have long since ceased to be understood.
and give the greatest challenge to the imagination of any interpreter. Here is the essence of the psalm. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. I say, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall as one man, O princess. The word which troubled the great scholars is Elohim. It is a plural word which may be translated as God or gods. God, Elohim, has taken his place in the divine council, proclaiming, You are gods, Elohim. God is a compound unity of one made up of others. It takes all of the generations of men and their experiences to form one God. The Elohim is not something distinct and separate from the many, for unity has a presence. Having fallen into division, we will return to the presence of unity, divided in a world of generation where all things die. We will return to the divine society where all things live. The presence is being formed by the return of the fallen man who carried all of the gods with him in his fall. It is not I and another called the Lord. Everyone is the Lord. As told us in Shema, the great Hebrew confession of faith, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. God has risen and is rising in all. He deliberately took upon himself man's nature. By that act of assumption, Jesus Christ became the pattern upon which the nature of man is molded. He didn't take a person called Neville upon himself, but my nature. And in so doing, Jesus Christ became the type upon which I have been molded raising this animal energy called man to divinity called God. Having fallen, God must now rescue himself. This he will do, for he has prepared the way for his return. You see, no man or group of men killed Jesus. It is he who said, No man takes my life, I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down and the power to lift it up again. Experiencing death by taking upon himself the animal nature of man, imagination takes that energy and transforms it into its own likeness. God is the great lover and artist who will transform you, his son of division, into himself. The image of love. Loving you so much, he died to begin his good work in you. He will complete it at the day of Jesus Christ. On that day you will rise to his level to discover that you and he are one creative power of love. There is only one way to return to the awareness of being God the Father and that is to follow the pattern of the true words which you have heard from me. I tell you from experience, you will awaken, rise, and are born from above. Five months later, David will stand before you and call you father. Four months from that date, your spiritual body will be split, and he who wove it for you will unwind himself as you. Then, two years and nine months later, the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, will descend upon you and smother you with love. Do you not believe in any being on the outside? 
Do not believe in any being on the outside. Make a decision within yourself to radically change your attitude towards another and persuade, persuade yourself that what you believe is true. If imagining creates reality and you practice repentance by radically changing your mind, you can take anything that dis displeases you and change it. Then persuade yourself that the change is real. Expect it to mold itself in harmony with what you are thinking, and the man, woman, or room will bear witness to your repentance. When you change your attitude towards another, he must change his attitude towards you. Are we not told? We love him because he first loved us. It always starts with self. If you want him to be different, you must initiate the change. And as you do, you are practicing repentance. For the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is now time to repent and to believe the gospel. Nothing so well concealed as the goodness of God. Nothing is so well concealed as the goodness of God. Look around you. And you will see murder, rape, and crime at every moment of time. So how can God be good or loving? It is hard to believe and will not be understood until the end, when that which has been concealed will be revealed. We are told the Spirit of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplish the intents of his mind. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. Jeremiah 22nd So in your last days, 